Hey YouTube, um, you may or may not know that I shoot F-Class, uh, long range and mid range F-Class, which if you're not familiar with is shot from prone position. So we use a rear bag like this and a front rest. This is my Bald Eagle front rest, which uh, I've modified. There's a gentleman who has a YouTube channel. Uh, his YouTube channel is Mr. BCRC. And he has a bullet comparator that compares bullets electronically to measure their consistency for shooting. And he also um, was experimenting designing a coaxial rest that could be 3D printed. And I actually have a 3D printer also. So I thought that I would give it a, tr a try. And I have modified his plans a little bit. Well, quite a bit actually. And this is my iteration of his development of the 3D printed coaxial rest. And I'm going to try and put it together here, show you how it works and what I've done. I put links in the description for his channel and for the files that he had generated and made available for download. And then the ones that I have modified, I will make available if you contact me, leave a comment request the files and I'll get you the uh, STL files for 3D printing if you're interested. So um, when I modified it, I made, my goal was to make it considerably smaller. You see this Bald Eagle Rest, this is the box of parts from the Bald Eagle Rest that are not used anymore. The base plates and the slider. This is called a Mariner wheel. Some more parts and some parts for the bag support, the bag slider it goes on the side. So these parts are no longer used. We still have vertical adjustment by loosening this. We have vertical adjustment here and we also have vertical adjustment here on this piece. This is where the Mariner wheel would have been, which we no longer need. So I'm going to try and put my camera down and see if I can get a good position where I can film this. Yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Let me see if I can use my bag, my shooting bag. Yeah, I need to get a tripod, but yeah, I don't do very many videos, so I'm not too worried about it. So this is the body. And in Mr. BCRC, he had this made in two pieces. There's a, uh, he had a, a front piece that came off and uh, I modified it so I don't need to do that. And that goes on with a single screw into the post secures the body now that's not tight but if we raise this up you'll see there's a lock ring underneath here that gets screwed up tight to the body bald eagle includes this wrench for tightening that And now we've got that nice and tight. This pe these pieces here are the horizontal slider for the horizontal component. I made it in two pieces so they can be inserted into the body. And that way we don't have to have a cover, a removable cover on the body. You see they, they go in here insert and then they lock together like that 
So they slide back and forth on a recessed area. You can't really see it, but this there's a five millimeter recess here at the top and at the bottom that it sits in and slides back and forth. That gives you your horizontal component. Then this is the vertical slider and it fits in here like that. That gives you your vertical component of the coaxial rest. So now you have your side to side and vertical. But I did modify this. See I have holes in the bottom. And what I did is I take a screw and a nut. And these holes are in the shape of a hex nut. So I drop this in. That locks the nut in place. And when I turn the screw, the nut just goes up and down. And what that is for is to adjust the tension on these screws or on these springs, which gives me preload to support the weight of the gun. If I don't have these, then the weight of the gun is all taken up by the joystick and you're holding the weight of the gun on by the joystick which gets heavy so one of my goals was to um, be able to offset that weight of the gun so i remove this here turn it over and insert the vertical piece oh i got it backwards Insert the vertical piece. And now I've got the spring loaded component. I'm going to insert a six millimeter bolt through the bearing in the back, and that goes through the bearing in the front. Now I've got the bolt in there. As this moves up and down, there's some front and back motion on the bolt that is taken up by the spring. Then I put a six millimeter nut on the bolt to hold that all in place. So now we can insert that back into the rest. So now we've got the spring-loaded vertical slider. And I made a handle. It's a eight millimeter diameter with a six millimeter inside diameter. And I also inserted a rare earth magnet, six millimeter diameter rare earth magnet in the end to hold it onto this screw. So that just slides over the screw. And it's held in place by the rear earth magnet. So now we've got our joystick for sliding back and forth. Now I gotta take it apart again because my springs are not lined up correctly. It's not giving me full down travel. I need different springs. That's what the noise is. I have a, two springs, one inside each other, and that's not an ideal situation, but it does give me enough preload to compensate for the weight of the gun. Then I made this top. If you're familiar with the rest called the Rodzilla, uh, the Rodzilla has a rotating top and this slides on to my vertical component and then it rotates. So now I can be able to change the position of the gun without having to move my rest left to right I can just rotate the gun and this will move side to side let's see if I can get my gun out and I'll set it in here Uh 
obviously this gun is unloaded. Here, I'll remove the bolt just so everybody is, feels comfortable. And it sits in here. And now you can see the weight of the gun is supported by the spring-loaded mechanism. So the uh, the weight of the gun is supported by the springs. I don't have to hold that with the joystick. Uh, it moves very simply, very easy, side to side. I, it's not going down right now because I, like I say, I have to replace those springs with different springs because um, they're compressed too far. But uh, yeah, it's working, working good. And uh, I appreciate all that Mr. BCRC has done. And uh, we'll continue with the development of this. Um, this is printed in PLA, if you're familiar with 3D printers. This is just PLA filament. I did try and print with PETG, which is stronger. And I will reprint this with PETG once I get everything finalized. So, appreciate y'all giving me a thumbs up. And uh, if you like the video, any comments... Feel free to respond below and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.